Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host Mark Guido and in this week's episode we are going to add a remote control and display to our Xantrex power inverter. So stay tuned. Now one thing we learned about our previous travel trailer is that we really missed having a remote control for our power inverter. We kind of have a habit of sometimes laying in bed right before we go to sleep, watch a little bit of TV, maybe a little bit of news. And a power inverter does have a built-in inefficiency to it. Usually it's around 10%. So even when you're not powering anything with it, it's still drawing power. And that necessitated, if we wanted to save our batteries as much as possible, not having a remote control necessitated going outside after we'd already been laying in bed and going out into the basement area and turning off the power inverter. That's something I wanted to avoid with our new rig. Uh, now, so we picked up this Xantrex remote control. It not only has uh, the display here to give us all the information about what's going on with our power inverter, it also has an on and off switch. It does have Bluetooth capability, so it also sends information to our smartphone that the inverter itself doesn't have. Unfortunately, it would be nice if it was built into the inverter, we'd be able to just use a phone app to do all this. But instead, we need to wire in this remote control. Now. Uh, KZ, when they built this at the factory, they put in a GoPower uh, solar controller. And there is actually a button on there to control your power inverter. Unfortunately, they put a GoPower solar controller in, but they put a Xantrex power inverter in. And they don't communicate with one another. So what I want to do is I want to mount it right here on the wall, directly above our existing control panels. Now, one thing I would like to take a moment to point out is that, yes, this is a Xantrex model remote control for a Xantrex inverter. However, most power inverters do come with the ability to install a wired remote control and display. Uh, the principles that we're about to show, that we're about to go through to install this in our wall, are no different than installing one from any other brand of power inverter that you may have. So here's where KZ mounted our power inverter. I mean, it's exactly the way it should be, right next to the batteries. And it's screwed right into the ceiling of our basement area. To be honest with you, it's kind of a pain to crane your neck to even see the display right on the unit. So it'll be nice to have a remote display right inside the RV. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have to figure out how I'm going to fish these wires down through this wall into the basement area where the power inverter is located. Uh, so I'm going to figure out what's going on in here and to do that before I start making a hole for the Xantrex controller. I'm just going to pull the solar controller panel out here and see what we've got back here. Now we're at T minus two weeks and counting before it's time for us to get back on the road and travel. And this is one of the last projects I wanted to do before we hit the road. It's coming up quickly, I'll tell you have so much to do in the next two weeks it's not even funny almost there we go so let's see what we've got back here pull this out well, son of a gun that's interesting there is actually a wooden divider in the wall right here kind of running vertically just a few inches from the left edge of the wall um, I'm gonna go down below down into our basement area pull that uh, false wall out of our basement area and see what we've got back there so the area directly below those control panels that are in our hallway is actually behind this false wall so just like we did when we changed out our converter uh, in our recent solar panel and uh, battery bank install episode, I'm going to have to take this television off, 
pull this false wall out so I can get back there and see what's going on. Well, this is really interesting. Let me show you what's going on here. The aluminum frame of the trailer actually runs beneath that wall, directly beneath the controllers. And that corner that you see there, that is almost exactly where that uh, little piece of wood that divides the wall is situated. It goes up directly from that corner. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm actually going to have to drill through that piece of wood and pass the cable back over there in that little darker area. Because otherwise, I don't have a way to get past that aluminum frame, and I sure as heck don't want to drill through that. So because of that aluminum frame directly below the right half of the wall that I just showed you, I really don't have any choice. I've got to go down the other side of this little wooden divider and it turns out that all the wires to the existing control panels inexplicably go up into the ceiling and I don't want to mess with that at all. So I'm just going to drill a hole into this little wooden divider. It's not like it's a structural member or anything and uh, that way I can just pass the RJ12 cable that the uh, display unit for the Xantrex uses and pass it right on down into the basement. That ought to do the trick. So here you can actually see what I'm talking about. There's that little wooden divider. I've got the hole drilled for the RJ12 cable and I'm just going to pass it through there and let gravity do its thing and carry it right down into the basement. So now let's go inside, grab that RJ12 cable where it came down through the wall and just uh, plug it into the inverter. And sure enough, here it is. All came down very nicely. I'm just going to plug it into the inverter. We'll test to make sure everything works before I drill the holes upstairs. shouldn't say that. Let me rephrase that. Before I cut, not before I drill the holes upstairs, before I cut the wall upstairs where I'm going to be mounting it. That's a little more clear. Sorry about that. These RJ12 cables, they just look just like a telephone cable if you're used to those. And of course, you know, I mean, assuming this all works, I'm going to eventually come back and zip tie this up to the ceiling with some screw mounted zip ties uh, the way I have other wires going through right now. And good, we've got a connection. We're getting information on the display showing what's going on with the inverter. So now our next step is to cut the wall up above. Now the reason I did this is I wanted to make sure that this worked before I started cutting holes in the walls for this particular display. And then I would find out that I didn't like it or it didn't work or whatever. Then I've got a hole in the wall for nothing. So I used the existing hole for the solar controller. So that way I can make sure everything worked before I set about destroying the wall up here. So now I've marked out on the wall where I'm going to be mounting this control unit. And what I'm going to do first is drill four pilot holes, one in each corner of the hole that I'm going to be drilling cutting out of the wall. So I got out the reading glasses for this step. Don't ever get old, it sucks. Um, I'm just going to take my Dremel and cut straight lines between these four holes to make the cut out in the wall for the control panel. Thank you. 
There we go. Let's grab something to pull that out with. It's not going to matter if I drop it down there in there, but I'd rather not. There we go. Got it out. Ready to put the uh, monitor right in the hole. So now immediately above our Lippert 1 control and our SOAR controller, we now have the Xantrex remote panel. Let me walk you through a little bit what we're actually looking at here. This light indicates that we are on short power. If we were on batteries with the inverter, this light would be, this LED would be illuminated instead. If we had any kind of fault code or error, this LED would illuminate in red and sound an alarm to indicate that there was a fault. This shows that our battery is at 13.9 volts. Now, if this was one of the Xantrex Freedom XC inverter chargers, this over here would indicate to us whether it was charging our batteries presently or not. However, this is a Freedom X inverter and not a Freedom XC inverter charger. Therefore, ours will always say no. This symbol over here indicates that we are presently on shore power, connected directly by the dotted line to our load. There's a load percentage graph, or kind of like meter or... Uh, gas gauge over here showing the percentage that it's actually using from our inverters capacity and this also indicates confirms with the word bypass that we are bypassing the batteries and going strictly from short power directly to load if we run batteries with the inverter while boondocking there would instead be a dotted line from the battery directly to our load passing through the inverter symbol which would appear right here on the display now if I scroll through the screens this currently shows the input and load on our branch circuit that's powered by the inverter. It's only connected to our GFCI outlets that are scattered throughout the trailer. They should always be the same. I would expect them to always be the same. The input and the load right now is 0.9 amps on our GFCI branch circuit. If I scroll again, this shows that our input right now on shore power is 121 volts AC at 60 hertz frequency if i scroll again the last two screens are kind of in, in unimportant is the word i'm looking for this shows the firmware version number on the inverter itself and the firmware version on the bluetooth remote panel now what i'm going to do is i'm going to install their mobile app on my on my phone on my mobile phone and connect to this via bluetooth and I'll walk you through the information and actually the useful features that are available on the Xantrex app. All right, so here's the devices screen on the Xantrex mobile app on my Android phone. Uh, you can see that we are connected to the Xantrex remote panel that we just finished installing. Uh, if I go to status, now here you see on the top of the screen, we are on AC bypass mode, which means we're connected to shore power. And via the transfer switch that's built into the Freedom X inverter, we are bypassing the batteries in the inverter and just passing shore power straight through it. You can see our, our grid information that we just saw on the remote panel itself, 122 volts, uh, 0.9 amps of load, and 60 hertz frequency electric Current, electrical current coming in from our shore power connection. Uh, it's going through to the load. You can see our load on our GFCI circuits is also 122 volts. It's drawing 77 watts. It's showing 7%. Now we're really not using the inverter at all and that's probably that uh, um, that inefficiency that we were talking about. But I'll be honest with you, I'm real, I really don't know. Uh, but we're also seeing our battery voltage at 14 volts. Our battery is not pointing out any any current at the moment. It's at 100% capacity. If we had any alerts, we would see them here on the alert screen. But the big benefit to this app 
in the Bluetooth controls that the remote panel provides is in the settings. Click on settings at the bottom. Now, these are all the various different settings for the Xantrex inverter. Now, what I want to tell you, if you've ever tried to configure a Xantrex Freedom X inverter, it is really not the most user-friendly interface. It's quite complicated. You scroll through the settings. Each setting doesn't have a name. It has a number. So you need to look up what that setting is. And the choices that you have are a second number. Kind of like the left-right on the display that we just showed you. The number on the left, the number on the right. Well, the number on the left on the, on the inverter is the setting and the number on the right is the choice for that setting. So you have to know what all those codes mean. If you screw up, you got to go all the way back around by scrolling forward back to the beginning and back to where you were. Instead, on this app, you can see everything is in plain English. For example, low battery cutoff. Right now it's set to cut off the inverter if the battery gets down to 10.5 volts. But I can just set it simply by scrolling through various selections. It's so much easier. You just pick your selection and hit apply. It even explains to you what these settings do. For example, low battery cutoff delay timer. It tells you in plain English what that setting does when the range is from 1 to 20, blah, 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 blah. So this is so much simpler. But here you can see the various settings that you can change on the inverter itself in our system and it gives you basic device information. This alone, to me, is worth the price of the remote panel. But having the remote panel to be able to remotely turn the inverter on and off, in addition to giving us the information right on the wall, to me is priceless. You know what? I don't think that Zoe's really happy that I'm sharing what she's claimed as her dog bed, uh, our couch in the back of the RV. But we really hope that you liked this episode. Give us a big thumbs up if you did. And like we said in the beginning, these principles, the exact same techniques, the exact same types of connections, the exact same types of cables apply to the remote controls and remote displays for virtually every brand of power inverter out there. So if you've got your own, it doesn't have to be a Xantrex, the exact same principles apply. You just have to apply them to your own unique situation. Figure out how you're going to run that cable and put it in the most convenient place inside your RV to be able to have remote information and remote control of that power inverter. Uh, if you also, we would love to hear from you in the comment section down below. Let us know about your own unique situation and how we might be able to help. We, like we said in the beginning of this video also, we're right about two weeks out from resuming our travels in resuming our travel episodes that we'll be filming for you. And we can't tell you how excited we are about getting back on the road. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer, this is the perfect time to go smash that little red subscribe button. The one right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every grand adventure that we air each and every Wednesday evening. And we'd be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then. Big stretch. <laughs>